Good morning, everybody, and Shavua Tov. We are very glad to host this conversation, weekly conversation today. And this week we shall speak about the life of Jacob in Egypt. After a period of famine in the land of Canaan, Jacob and his 11 sons, children and grandchildren are going down to Egypt. Joseph, as a secondary to the king of Egypt, is providing them. He asked from Pharaoh to give them a place to sit and the brothers of Joseph sitting in the land of Goshen next to the Mediterranean Sea in Egypt. The time is passing by and Jacob, the father, is getting old and a bit sick. Um, Joseph is a minister in the house of Pharaoh, get a message that says that his father is sick. And he, bring, he brings his both sons, Menashe and Ephraim, that we see here in the picture, to get a blessing from his father. Jacob blesses the children of Joseph. And then he blesses his old children. Each one has his own blessing. While Joseph gets a special blessing and also Jacob is asking from him a special request. Please don't bury me in Egypt. This is what Jacob the father asks Joseph the son. Please don't bury me in Egypt but bring me and buried me in the place of my fathers are buried in the cave of Machpelah in the city of Hebron. Jacob asked Joseph to vow for him and Joseph agrees. Jacob collect his legs and stay on the bed and ascends, his soul is ascending. And Joseph asks the doctors, the Egyptian doctors, to embell his father. The days to complete this process is 40 days. After this process is been completed, the Egyptians are mourning for Jacob's for Jacob's uh, 70 days. Here is the verse that describe the process. is Genesis chapter 50 verse number 3. I try to click it. וימלאו לו ארבעים יום, כי כן ימלאו ימי החנותים, ויבקו אותו מצרים שבעים יום. And forty days were fulfilled for him, for so are fulfilled the days of the embalming, and the Egyptians wept for him, therefore, therefore, three score and ten days.
if we if we we connect the 40 days of embalming and the 70 days when the Egyptians cried for his ascending, we get a number of 110. And then Joseph asked the King Pharaoh to bury his father in Hebron. So we have already 110 days. Pharaoh gives his consent and Joseph and his brothers with a huge voyage of escorties, they come up from Egypt to bury Jacob in the cave of Machpelah. When they come, they still mourn him for seven, seven more days. So what we have is 40 plus 70 plus 7 is 117. But when we write the number, we can write it 1, 2 dots, colon, and 17. So in the days that the whole process of bringing Jacob into his resting place is not just we can read it as 117 days, but also we can read it as 1 against the 17. 1 calling 17, which is 1 against good, because 17 in Hebrew is the gematria of the word tov, which is good. And this is the process that the Bible described Jacob life, which is also named Israel, because Jacob was his name when he was born, because he was born as a twin brother to Esav. And Esav was bo born first, while the other baby, the other twin, was holding his ankle. So they named him after the action that they saw when, while he was coming from the womb. They named him Jacob, Yaakov, from Akev, Akev, ankle. But since he fought with, when he came from the house of his father-in-law, and on the way, at the river of Yabok, he had to fight a man which was trying to kill him returning to the land of Canaan and he managed to, to win this struggle. God says, from now on, your name will not be Jacob, meaning after the, the lowest part of the body, Yaakov from Akev, from Enkel, your name will be from now on Yisrael, meaning you manage to cope with people and with gods, with Elohim, and you manage, you, you manage to cross the battle of the many and you move to the one. This is what it means Yisrael, Yashar, El straight for God, or if we take the five letters of Israel, is Li Rosh. I have the head, I have the one. Because his name, what, which was given to him in the beginning by his parents, was Yaakov after the two, because each person has two ankles, like the double. But by fighting against the man, at the river of Yabok, he managed to overcome the many and unite with the one. This is why he is named Israel. So Jacob has two names. Jacob is his name in the world of multiplicity, in the world of many. 
And Israel is his name when he managed to cross, la'avor, to pass from Ivri, la'avor, to pass from the many to the one. So, like it happens in his name, the transformation from Yaakov, from the two ankles into the one head, Lirosh, Yaakov, Israel, also in the time, in the time, in the frame time of his life, the years that he spent here on earth and the days of mourning and the days of embel, embalming and the days of um, mourning about him in Egypt and his son specially mourned for him in the land of Canaan, we see the same pattern. 40 the days, 40 are the days of embalming, embalming and 70 are the days of crying together 110 and the seven days that his son, his sons mourn about him in the land of Canaan is seven so it's 117 which is one against the good. 17 in Hebrew is good. So we see again in the whole process of bringing him to rest of to rest in peace. You see, we see again the relation between the one. The one is good. If if we look at the expressions of the numbers, as we say before, the numbers are a reflection of something higher. Interestingly, also. Joseph has a special day because in the same chapter we read that Joseph had a very interesting number, the, the years that he lived on earth. And we shall read the verse. It's from Genesis 50, verse 26. First we shall read the Hebrew and then the English. Vayamat Yosef בן מאה ועשר שנים, ויחנתו אותו, וישם בארון במצרים. So Joseph died, being a hundred and ten years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. As we see, 110 is a very, very, very special number because, again, we can see in the, this number two, two ways of thinking. First, against, we see 110 is one against the 10, or the one who includes the 10, or 10 times 11. 10 times 11 gives us also 110. So again, we, we see in the years that Joseph lived, the power of the 11, the elevating power. Also in the life that he lived on earth, we can see in his number 110 is how the one, Joseph, see the whole unity in the 10. As we read here, Joseph was embalmed and put in a coffin. But before he dies, he asks all the people in his room, or more not ask, but telling them, but also in a way asking them. He says, one day, God will save you. And you will go back to the land of Canaan. And please, when you go to the land of Canaan, please bring with you the coffin. Or he says more pre precisely, please bring with you my bones. Meaning the key. The symbolic key of the Exodus is to bring Joseph's bones with them from Egypt to the land of Canaan. But 
we know that the Bible do not speak about physical bones, though it happened in the past, it's an historical event. What does it mean to bring Joseph bones with them and why to bring Joseph bones with them is a condition to to leave Egypt, to leave the house of many or the world of many and to go back to the land of Canaan, which is the land of the one. Because at some point, bones in Hebrew at some point, comes from the word etzim, bone. Etzim is not just a bone in English, but essence. The essence of Joseph, at Smot Yosef, is not just the bones of Joseph physically, but the essence of Joseph, his life, what he lived for. The idea that he lived for is to help the one and or to be with the one so this is why it is israel cannot leave egypt cannot leave slavery conditions until they will bring the bones of joseph the essence of the one they will become one this is the only way to leave egypt this is why moses and sorry moses joseph asked them before uh, he perishes please bring my bones with you when you return to the land of Canaan. In a way, he asked and swore them that they will do so. One person was attending in his request. Her name was Serach Bat Asher, and she lived long enough to be living in the time of Moses. She lived from, she was hearing what Joseph said until the time of Moses. And she helped Moses because the Egyptians who were in the room with Joseph knew that one day the people of Israel will leave Egypt. And the Egyptians did not want to lose the slaving power of the Israelites. So, or the Hebrew people. So what did they do? They embellished Joseph. They put him in a coffin, but they did not bury him. Because when people bury somebody in land, there is a mark, there is a stone. People know where to find and they can come and reunite with the memory. But the Egyptians who knew that Israel will want to have the essence of Joseph, they will look for him. But, and they knew that when the uh, Israeli or the Hebrew will look for Joseph bones, they could leave Egypt and they will remain without slaves. So what did they do? They sang a Joseph coffin in the Nile in the water of the Nile and in this way the water always moving and it's impossible for the Hebrew people to find the coffin when they want to leave Egypt but there was one person who was attending Joseph's uh, request and she lived long enough to be living in the time of Moses and the Exodus and Moses knew this condition, the condition to leave Egypt is to find the coffin of Joseph, but he did not know everybody was busy, like organizing to leave Egypt. And, and, and Moses was walking on the, on the bank of the Nile and, and asking, how, how can I find this coffin? I have to keep this promise, Other, not just to keep a promise, because it's impossible to leave Egypt without the notion of the one. So how... He should find a coffin of a person who lived 200 years before him. So Serach Bat Asher came, saw Moses on the bank of the Nile, and she knew the place, and she said, here, look here. And Joseph took a piece of uh, silver and wrote on top of it, rise, bull, because Joseph was like a bull. 
he, he was like the minister of economy for the Egyptians and for all the world. And he wrote us an, on a, this silver piece, Alesho, rice bull, and he threw this into the water. And when he threw these uh, two words into the water, the coffin of um, Joseph was rising and uh, jo um, Moses could pick it up. And when everybody in Egypt, the Hebrew, were busy of taking what they can do from Egyptian just to leave in slavery, Moses took care only of one thing to carry the coffin of Joseph onto his back. He did not take any material, nothing from Egypt, just Joseph's coffin. And when the Hebrew people left Egypt, they left in the following order. First, Joseph's coffin at the head, and then Moses walking second, and then all the people of Israel. Why Joseph was going first at the head of the caravan of the Exodus? Because he has the notion of the one. So this was our little conversation today about Joseph and Jacob and a bit of Moses in Egypt. And if you have, I know it's a very complex topic because I don't, I don't just tell the story. I also focus on like the main thing in the story. It's, it might be heard complex in the beginning, but we do our best. If you have any questions, it, it is time to ask. Hello, Muhammad, and hello, Dalia. Do you have any questions to ask? Did you, did you have time to listen to this conversation? Did you hear the story? You can write in the chat box if, if you had enough time to hear the story. So I will write here at the text box something Joseph lived 110 years, is one against the 10, yes. Did the Jews really transfer Joseph? What do you mean? They, in this time, Dalia, they were not called the Jews. This is a very later term. Jews uh, is like almost 1500 it, they were in this time the Hebrews. They 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 transfer. They they took the coffin with them. The Hebrew people. Jo I mean, first Moses. He was the one who was carrying Joseph's coffin, and they left Egypt with the coffin of Joseph. I can tell you even something deeper than just the externalities about Joseph Coffin. Later, when they will leave Egypt and go in the desert and they will have the Ten Commandments with them, it will happen only in the later uh, chapters of the Exodus. But since they did not yet receive the Ten Commandments at the day they leave Egypt, the coffin of Joseph is like the Ten Commandments. Why? Because Joseph kept the, the covenant with God. He is always aligned with God. So this is why they, when they leave Egypt, Joseph's coffin is, comes at first. It's like the Ten Commandments. This is why the coffin of Joseph is also named in Hebrew Aaron Habrit. 
is a place when the covenant is kept because Joseph kept the covenant with God. So his coffin is like It's like a little synagogue when you, you hold the, the Ten Commandments inside. This is why he goes first. Yes, yeah, sorry, but I, I, lear I learned that the Hebrew people transfer him. Yes, what do you mean transfer? What do you mean transfer? gold like Egyptians C can you explain what you say meanwhile I will I will say that the Hebrew people took Joseph coffin with them 40 years because their their voyage in in the desert ha, was was like long forty years because they cannot move from the world of multiplicity from Egypt they cannot click on a button and move to Israel it's a process so they still wander in the desert for forty years in which they make also forty two voyages inside because they moving between 42 dots like places again multiplicity even numbers always are stand for the world of many and all this time jo joseph is uh, coffin is with them and when they will come to the land of Canaan with joshua they will bury him in the city of shechem transport you mean to carry Dahlia do you mean to carry transport such as the Egyptian coffin or Yes, 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 yes. This word in English is, I guess, this is also a new word for me that I had to use it today. Embalmed, yes, 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 he did. Yes, Dahlia, he, they, they did it. In Hebrew, yes. I see the word in Arabic too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dahlia. Yes, it's true. The word in Hebrew for embalm, em, em, for me it's hard to say this in English, is chanat, chanat, chet, nun, tet, chet, nun, tet, vdei vayachnetu oto, vayachnetu oto, ken et Yosef chantu, he was, he was embalmed, also, um, Israel's father, Jacob's father also were embalmed. So it is very interesting that the father and the son were embalmed also in Egypt. They, they both died in Egypt from all the, the patriarch. I mean, Abraham, he died in the country, the land of Canaan and also Yitzhak. But since uh, Joseph and uh, Jacob's father died in the land of Egypt, they were embalmed to keep their shape as one. This is very, very interesting. I wrote a deep article about this in Hebrew and I hope one day I could also write it in English because there's a deep secret in all of this. Do you have any or more questions? Is the same verb in Arabic too? Uh, it's the same verb in Arabic too. It's the same verb, yes. Yes, 
Very interesting. What what is the meaning of the word mummy? What is the of the word mummy? I can say in Hebrew what is the meaning. Maybe it will help the English because the source, I think, is in Hebrew. In Hebrew, we say mumya, mumya. And in a way, to say there is nothing, mum is like something which has like a defect. But also we can say meumya, meaning there's nothing but ya which is wisdom and understanding because in a way the body is when time passes by the, the body just perishes and what is left from us is yeah the first or the half of the name of the tetragrammaton which is yeah so mumia is nothing but yeah but everything can be also destroyed Mum is something with with a defect, but yeah, the name of God is always complete. I hope that I I, I answer a question. Like what what is the inner meaning of um okay? What is the okay? What is the inner meaning of embal embalming? Are they talking about something physical? Oh, thank you, Dahlia. Uh, it's not something physical. It's not something physical because in this article, uh, well, there is an ancient book called the Book of Zohar. And it describes the the process of Hanita, the, the process of embalming. And they describe that on the, the body of the deceased, so to speak, they put an oil on the belly button. What happens is that Yes, Dalia. Uh, what happens is, but it's more um, that when you put a special oil, they called shemen amishcha, shemen amishcha, meaning it's not just a dripping oil, but it's like more like a balsam or like a cream. They put it on the belly of of the deceased, the button belly. What happens is the oil is penetrating. Because the belly button inside of us is a double pipe for entry. Because why do we have a belly button? We can ask ourselves. Why every human being born, all of us, men and women, doesn't matter. All of us have a belly button. Why? Because before we came to this life, when we were still fetuses in our mother womb, what could give us life is the connection with the cord to our mummies, meaning the mummy, the conceived woman with pregnancy, giving through the cord air and life to, to the baby. Once we leave the womb of the mummy, we don't need this cord anymore. So the doctors at the laborers or the midwife, they cut it and the baby can inhale by himself and can do what he can cry or can move. And But the belly button is a very interesting connection because it has a double connection. While we are being in the, wo- in the womb of the mother, we get like air, but also the, what, the, what the baby also takes from his body out is also goes through this pipe. He cleans himself and inhales and eats, and everything is like 
what he will do when he will grow up in different openings of his uh, body, he does it through the one cord. One cord does everything for him. So let's go back to the deceased person who's lying uh, on the bed. What the doctors do, uh, did in Egypt, they put an oil, a balsam, like a thick oil on the belly button. In this way, because we say the belly button is a double pipe, the oil goes back into, goes in, into the belly button, while the inside and burns into the body, while all the content of the intestine can go out without interfering and smashing the body with tools. So everything, just by using the oil, the oils, the chemistry of the oils burns inside and pushes the, the what is left over, the, the material that destroyed the body outside without. The doctor has to cut the body into, into pieces and, and smash the, the beauty, the holistic aspect of the image of man because man was created in the image of God. So you don't touch it with a tool. Only the oil does the work. It's not a tool because the oil, in a way, is light. When you, you, shemin, shemin is the same letters like otiot neshama, is the soul, is like an image of the soul. So, not a tool, but the shemin itself goes inside, makes his, um, uh, his work without a man touching anything. This is only by God done, not the doctors. They don't interfere with this process at all. The shemen, the, the olive tree, which was not harmed in the flood, that you can illuminate with him. It's not a material because oil is not material. It's like we say, the same gematria of shemen is like shemaim. It's something heavenly. It's not even, it's not material. And this oil does the job person does not interfere all what was the intestine this, this destructive materials they they leave the body from it their back openings and everything remain complete this is what the book of zohar says that in a way jacob the father and the son move through this process in egypt specifically in the land of Egypt, in, in the world of plenty, in the world of multiplicity, it was very important that they will go through this process to show that everything in one, meaning even in the Egypt, in the most darkest place, everything remain as one. No person no, with a death point can touch them. It's only the oil that remains, the heavenly is working through the process, nobody's touching them. The father is one, the son is one, and the father, Jacob, is buried in the cave of Machpelah, while the son, Joseph, is buried in the city of Shechem. I hope I answer a bit a very complex topic. Do you have any other questions? The Song of Songs, Shira Shiri, the book that Solomon, King Solomon wrote, described the process of spring or the process of going, thank you very much, uh, the going out of Egypt, but in terms of the seasons of the year, it, it described the seasons of spring. And one of the, the verses, he says, meaning the fig has completed her process. She's complete. And they use the verb chanta, chanat, while the English says as embalmed. So in a way, the process of chanita, the process of embalmment, keeps everything complete. This is very important. Thank you for this conversation. Thank you for, t for participating. Thank you for asking questions. I know this thing is very complex 
and we cannot roll the scroll in one day, but little by little, drop by drop, is a process of many years. So wish you very good week and very good luck and a lot of illuminations and unity in all our lives. Thank you.